This month is the 44th anniversary of the death of Black Consciousness Movement founder Stephen Bantubigo at the hands of the ruthless apartheid police and to this day no one has been held accountable for his death on the 11th of September 1977. The apartheid era inquest on his death exonerated five security agents in his killing. Good evening and welcome to Unfiltered. I'm Aldrin St. Pierre. But there seems, to be a green, uh, there seems to be a green light as the National Prosecuting Authority is set to announce a specialized unit aimed at prosecuting perpetrators of apartheid atrocities. Not fast enough, though, for the families of anti-apartheid activists Ahmed Timol and the Cradock Four, whose killers Joao Rodriguez and Eric Winter died in the last, in the last weeks. Both Rodriguez and Winter had not made a full disclosure uh, to what really happened to their victims, taking the truth to their graves. The families of the murdered anti-apartheid activists are demanding that justice be tracked. Our guest this evening is Lukanyo Kalata, who is the son of one of the so-called Credoct Four, uh, Fort Kalata, and we're also joined by Imtes Kaji, who is the nephew of Ahmed Timol, as well as the executive director of the Human Rights Institute of South Africa, Urisa, who will join us a bit later. And please note that we have extended an invitation to the NPA, and they've unfortunately couldn't uh, participate in this evening discussion but remember that you can be part of this discussion using the hashtag unfiltered on social media let me start off the conversation by introducing Imtas good afternoon good evening rather welcome to the show so since, since the last time we spoke on uh, radio you said that you had not spoken to the NPA at the time have you received any indication as yet whether the NPA will be how the NPA will be proceeding with this case um, good evening Aldrin um, absolutely nothing. Um, we're still waiting with bated breath as to the response of the NPA um, and as to how they intend proceeding on the Joe Rodriguez matter, Aldrin. Uh, my understanding is that uh, his next court appearance for the criminal trial was scheduled for the 30th of September, um, and we're still awaiting a date from the Constitutional Court uh, in Bramfontein, um, you know, for the uh, hearing to be uh, heard uh, pertaining to the, the application to the SEA that was dismissed earlier this year. Mm -hmm. Imtas, tell me, um, why is it so important for you to pursue this particular case and ensuring that justice is served? Well, we owe it, we, we owe it to our martyrs, Aldrin. I mean, my uncle is just one of thousands of young men and women throughout the country, you know, who would pay the ultimate price for you and I uh, to live in this democratic country with all the challenges that we face. Uh, we owe it to them. We owe it to their legacy. Um, and, and history is going to judge us. Um, 25 years post the TRC, what, do we, what did we do fighting for truth and justice for our loved ones? Um, what role did government play uh, in ensuring that their own comrades who were in the trenches with them uh, were, were, were mercilessly killed? And the painful reality is that they've become a distant uh, memory, um, selectively recalled uh, during commemoration services, anniversaries and so forth. But the fact of the matter remains that government has dismally failed, and the question must be asked why. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, Lukang, you're also joining us for this conversation. Good evening. Welcome to, welcome to this conversation, uh, Mr. Kalata. Here's another important one, and just from your end as well. Why is it so important for you to pursue this matter, also considering all the other hurdles that you face, and of course that court application that you've brought to force the NPA um, to decide on whether or not there will be any prosecution? Good evening, Aldrin. Uh, well, it is, of course, very important that we pursue the matter of uh, justice for the Credoc Four. Remember that South Africa is a, demo a, a democracy today. It is a constitutional um, democracy. It is a country where you and I are free to be who we're, we were meant to be from, you know, from the day we were born. And the country is what it is today because people like my dad, Fort Kalata, people like Matthew Gonewe, Sparum Konto, Strelom uh, Saoli, Timor, people like Steve Biko, people like Victoria Mkenge, Noctula Simelane. And, I, and we can go on and we can mention hundreds, if not thousands of people who laid down their lives for us. Uh, We seem to have lost. Um, they were going to and try and. Colleague. 
Okay, we're going to try and reestablish the line there. Um, the network is not is, is not so great, but in but in the meantime, um, look uh, if you can hear me now. Tell tell me about the decision though to say that now let's take this matter um, to the court so that the NPA can decide whether they're going to prosecute or not. And should the NPA, for instance, have decided that they're not going to prosecute, we still don't know what the decision is. Um, what other avenue is it that you want to explore? Well, it was important for us to go to court uh, because we had been waiting for far too long uh, to get the uh, NPA to make a decision and for it to prosecute uh, the murderers of the Credit Four. Time is running out. As you can see, uh, last year we had, uh, uh, last week, sorry, we had Jao Rodriguez die. Mm -hmm. uh, two or three weeks before that, we had Eric Winter die. So time is not on our side. What happens if next week or the week thereafter we have someone like F.W. de Klerk, God forbid, he dies, or, um, or, or Adrian Flock? He dies. What do we do in those instances? So it's very, very important for us that we, the NPA act with speed uh, to prosecute these people. I think if the NPA doesn't decide, uh, if you know, doesn't decide to prosecute, what we will do is that we will have to appeal those decisions. We'll have to go to the High Court. We'll have to go to the Supreme Court of Appeal. We'll have to go to the Constitutional Court. And if that fails, we'll, we'll, we'll have to pursue the, the route of the International Criminals Court. And I think only once all of those avenues are closed to us, we will, have, we will then have no option but to, to sue the state. I mean, it's not, it's not something that we want to do. Um, because the state doesn't have money. Those are our taxes. Yeah. So if we sue the state, we, in essence, we are suing ourselves. But, you know, what do we do then if we are literally left with no other option? Okay, so when we come back, I'm going to ask him to ask a similar question because the difference here is that unlike with the Cradle 4 matter, with this one, with the Ahmed Timo, there was a decision that was taken to prosecute. But now the main suspect is dead. That conversation just after this. Okay, um, Imtas, can you still hear us? Our matter. Yes, uh, yes, Aldrin, loud and clear. Perfect, thank you.
Okay. MTS, we're coming back now. We will be on you as soon as we come back. Next 30 seconds. Sure, all done. All good. And welcome back. So, Imtas, one of the issues that Lukangu raises, which is quite important, um, is the issue around evidence disappearing, number one, but also um, the people being frail, um, those who would be witnesses, and then, of course, people also dying. But I just quickly want to read from what um, Shamila Batoy, the NDPP, had said earlier on this year. She said, time is not on our side. We have a small window to address this. Loved ones need to see justice being done, and justice will not be served until we act decisively against those that the NPA was once powerless to hold to account. What do you make of that? You know, again, very brilliant uh, rhetoric, uh, um, Aldrin. I mean, I, I, I attended a meeting with Lukanyo's mom, with Tembi Kadimeng, with Professor Mohamed Harun and Yasmin Suka, with the NDPP, you know, shortly after she was appointed. And I made it very clear to her that, you know, she had two options. The one is work closely with families, um, honestly, sincerely, so that we can turn this dismal performance of the NPA into something constructive, positive, and more importantly, to assist families to find closure. Mm -hmm. And secondly, Aldrin, to continue the route of lying, uh, deceiting, uh, stalling and playing for time, and it was very evident to me that her actions spoke louder than words. And the rea reality is that under her watch, Rodriguez has died. The other cases have not moved. And she, she doesn't have an alternative. The, the full bench of the South Gauteng High Court was scathing against her and the NPA, as well as the, as well as the, as the Supreme Court of Appeal in Bloemfontein. Yeah. They actually instructed her to take action against Chris McAdam and Tory Pretorius because of their conduct in, in, in dealing with TRC cases. Yeah. And the reality is that she failed to act on both of them. So yeah. political utterances are not good enough for us any longer. She, 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 and for I'm instance, convinced that we can turn this matter quickly. Yeah, in, in, in the quote that I just read now, Imta, she speaks of an NPA that was once powerless. And then as the Supreme Court of Appeal, as you've just noted now, speaks about political interference at the time in a decision that was taken, um, the, the court saying that it was during this 14-year period that the executive adopted a policy position conceded by the state parties that TRC cases would not be prosecuted. Have you ever asked yourself why such a policy was taken and also why that has now continued even um, during this particular period? You see, the, you see, the reality that we face, Aldrin, is that those allegations and claims were made by the former NDPP, Vusi Pikol and Anton Ackerman, and they were backed up by the likes of Tory Pretorius and Chris McAdam. Now, what, in my view, what simply should happen, that the likes of the former minister, Bridget Mabandla, and the others involved in the President Mbeki administration, who were alleged to have uh, interfered politically, preventing the investigation of TRC cases, must account for this. And the reality is that there is a deafening silence on their part. Um, and, 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 and for us, that speaks volumes. Yeah. And the question must be asked, why, why would they prefer and give preference to apartheid era perpetrators who have killed their own comrades? And they are not prepared and willing to come forward to assess us as families to find truth and justice for our loved ones. Yeah. Lukanyo, have you reflected on that question at all around um, political interference? and why there seems to be this reluctance, at least from the state side, to make sure that these apartheid-era crimes are prosecuted? Aldrin, uh, I think on the 5th or on the 6th of uh, August, if not July, sorry, July, FW de Klerk Foundation issued a statement in which it spoke about how the, ND, the NPA would have to prosecute perpetrators on both sides of the fence former apartheid operatives as well as former ANC operatives. And in that statement, de Klerk makes a crucial admission. He says in that statement that there were former or that there were ANC leaders that had entered into informal agreements with um, members or, or, or former apartheid operatives. Now, de Klerk makes this admission.
So the reason why we are sitting here today, empty as an eye, because Nati Migo is not part of this discussion. Tembin Kadimeng is not part of this discussion. Uh, the, the Mohapi family is not part of this discussion. Uh, but I can, like, the, the Mlenge family is not part of this discussion. And, they, and, and the reason why we as the families are all sitting here having these debates and these discussions is because the ANC would much rather let our, turn its back on our families, allow our wounds to keep on festering and to keep on bleeding and our hearts to break each and every day, then let the truth be known about the illegal deals that they got entered into with former apartheid operatives. The ANC sold out our fathers in those illegal deals that they entered into with those apartheid operatives. Nobody, nobody from my family, not me, not my mother, not my two sisters, Dorothy and Tumani, gave anybody from the ANC, anybody, the right to go and negotiate on Fort Khalata's behalf. So whatever agreement that the ANC entered into with, um, with former apartheid operatives around the, 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 the non-prosecution of Fort Khalata's murderers was not sanctioned by us. Mm -hmm. So we don't care what agreements they made. We don't, we, we don't care two hoots about those things. We want justice, and we don't care about the ANC's secrets. Honestly, we don't care. The ANC, it says it wants to be a government in this country. Therefore, it must govern and it must deliver on its obligation to us to yeah. serve us with justice. You know, justice, Aldrin, is not like health care. You can't outsource it outsource it. It's not like policing. You can't outsource it. It's not like building houses. You can't outsource it. Justice is a competency of the state. Yep. And if the ANC says it wants to be the governing party, then it must fulfill its obligations of justice to us. Quickly speak to us about the missing docket, though, the one that disappeared. <laughs> you know... I... Eldon, you, like, you know, I don't know what to say about this thing. You know, it is frustrating beyond, beyond measure, my brother. How can it be that a docket of a case that is as serious as the murders of the Craddock Four goes missing inside the NPA? Inside. I am sure that... You know, you and I, we work as journalists. If you and I make a mistake on air about anything that we do, we have to, we, we will be held accountable. Our editors will ask us, Lucanio, what happened? Mm -hmm. Aldrin, what is this? So how come when a docket goes missing of a murder that is so serious, nobody is held accountable? The other day, the NPA sent uh, um, uh, the Hawks sent a letter to our uh, to our lawyers, basically to say that the the case is closed and the NPA isn't going to prosecute. How can uh, how can the case be closed? Who did they investigate? You know, they don't give us all. So I don't I don't know for it. I don't know how yeah. to answer that question other than to say that it all feeds back to this conspiracy that no matter what happens, no matter what happens, the, the, the murders of the credit of four cannot be investigated because the okay. ANC made deals with former apartheid operatives that they will not prosecute these matters. And they are showing us that they would much rather protect the apartheid criminals than the victims of apartheid. So when we come back, we have a conversation about what should happen next, considering that, of course, you have um, the apartheid victims and people who were killed during apartheid, but their family members still live on. They live on in a democratic space. And as Lukanyo indicates, that, of course, you have the ANC, which remains the governing party.
work. Those days are over. It won't work. It won't work. Mm. Mm. They can't yeah, hide. They... <laughs> it's sad though, man, and it's so heartbreaking. It's so heartbreaking, man. But 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 we're never going to give up, my brother. Never. That oh. that that you can be rest assured that. The fact that we've come so far, even though it might appear it's a snail pace, but the fact that we are moving, it's because of our persistence. It's because of our persistence. So they are not going to succeed in stalling any longer. They won't succeed. Are you, are, are you, are you thinking about suing? Well, well, you should. Now reason. that Rodriguez is now that Rodriguez is dead, you should, you should, you should, you should sue the state. You, you should, you should sue them. And I, 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 I mean, go ahead. I, I think the, the, the appeal at the Constitutional Court is, is, is going to be very significant mm. because that is going to set the president for all the other cases. And if the Concord rules in our favor, which I think it will, mm. Mm. But, but that is why I'm, they, they, they can't run, they can't hide, they've got no defense. The fact that they can't come on these shows, what are they going to say, uh, Buffett? They, they've got nothing to say. They must just get their house in order and work with us and get these things done. Okay, we're coming back in a minute or so. Cool. Sure, sure, Alman. And welcome back. So, um, Imtas and Lukanyo, I'm going to... Uh, something beautiful happened um, while we were on an ad break, and I'm going to take a used risk here and see whether this is possible to, um, to replay that moment. Um, but with you two right now, I think what happened was very, very important. So, Imtas, the conversation that you had with Lukanyo right now about not giving up, um, please speak to Lukanya about that, and Lukanya, from your end as well, speak to Imtas about um, the struggle of getting to where you are at the moment. I guess your voices are not just the voices of the families that you represent right now, but also the voices of many other victims who don't get an opportunity to be on air on SABC3 and share their thoughts. There's also their disappointment, I believe, in the state. Imtas, I'll start off with you. Prophet Lukanya, you know, you know, this is our struggle. Um, your, your dad fought his struggle, my uncle fought his struggle. This is our struggle to fight for truth and justice. And even though there are days when it is tough, it is hard, when we find a, when we find a state, a government of us, our people, that fail to serve our interests, but rather prefer the interests of apartheid era perpetrators, it is very, very painful. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that they are not going to run and hide any longer, as we've demonstrated in the Rodriguez matter. Even though he did not have his, his day in court for the criminal charges, he, he faced 19 court appearances, perfect. Mm -hmm. And I made sure that I attend those court appearances, many times sitting alone in the gallery with him, to know that I have not given up. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that even when he was sick and ill and going through a difficult time, he was aware that I am not persisting. I'm continuing to persist, and I'm not going to let the matter slide. And I can only imagine the pain that your mom and your sisters and yourself go through. It is very difficult. And Aldrin is 100% correct. We represent the voiceless. The voiceless who did not even attend the TRC hearings. And there's nobody speaking on their behalf. And they should not go and search for lawyers to represent them, to find foreign funding to assist our legal costs. It is the responsibility of the state because the state should represent our interests. Yeah. It is the moral and ethical obligation for the state to represent us, and the NPA must no longer just be passengers in reopening these cases and fight litigation in court, but to execute their duties so that your family and the other families in this country can fight truth and justice 
in our lifetime, and this must happen now, Buffett. Thank, thank you so much for that, Intels. And, and you know, I've said to you many, many times before that you have been a guiding light for me in all of this. You have been a mentor. You've been someone that I look up to and someone who continues to show me uh, and my family just how important it is for us to continue to fight. And as I've said to you in person, that as long as I have breath in my body, your family and your matter and every other of these cases, of the 300 cases that the TRC had handed over to the government, I will continue to raise my voice to ensure that this government hears us, mm -hmm. that they take us seriously, and that they know that we are here, we're not going anywhere, and we will do whatever is necessary to ensure that the lives of our fathers, of our mothers, of our brothers, our sisters, of our aunts and our uncles are afforded the dignity that they deserve. Yeah. Their deaths must never be in vain, never. And, well, I will, and I will do everything that you need me to to help you with that. Well, gents, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate that you also came on the show and were able to exchange those words to each other. And um, just, uh, I think, a sense of gratitude um, that you have the courage to continue to push on and eventually perhaps uh, justice will be served. Listening into this conversation is uh, Colette Litlojana, who is uh, the Executive Director of uh, the Human Rights Institute of South Africa. Colette, good evening. Welcome to the show. Just listening into that exchange between MTAS as well as Lukanyo, one gets the sense that for these families at least, it is very important that justice be seen to be served. Good evening to you and uh, the listeners and the panelists there. I think it is very important uh, for justice to be done. We have a, a progressive constitution, we have the laws, and we have undergone through a process of TRC recommendations were made. We are now on the 25th uh, anniversary of our constitution and 27 years in democracy. I do not understand why we will be, uh, we are still stuck in not making progress uh, to uh, ensure that the human dignity, that uh, the families and uh, the people that suffered the atrocities of apartheid receive uh, redress. And um, we are supporting um, uh, organizations such as Kulumani Support Group. They have been very vocal from the onset, and uh, we need to increase uh, to mobilize more voices, because I think uh, many people um, uh, have even lost hope mm. in, the, in, in, the, in this process. But if we lose hope, it means we are, uh, you know, strengthening uh, a very bad culture uh, mm. of, uh, of government and uh, all those that are responsible uh, that need to be held accountable to go for, for free. Uh, mm. we, we, we have seen how um, a culture of impunity uh, is increases in the country. Uh, we still see the very same type of crime committed even in today's life, yeah. where uh, human rights defenders operate not so freely. You fear for your life to yeah. exercise or your your views, your expression, and uh, even to come and testify. We've seen the assassination. Yeah. That are Unfortunately, in the uh, Colette, we've run out of time, but really Stop. appreciate um, the time that you've made available for us to speak about this very important issue, and that is pursuing justice for all apartheid era crimes. Thank you so much for choosing Unfiltered this evening. See you again next week, Monday, right here on S3.